Hey friends, hope you're doing well and welcome to this bonus video. Now, today I'd like to show you a trick which allows you to plot, in this case, the month names as well as the quarters on the same axis in a chart. As you can see here in this visualization, so let's say you are interested in the sales development or any other kind of KPI. And normally what you would have in Power BI would only be the month names, for instance, for the specific year which we have selected here. But maybe, as you can see here, you're also interested in what is the sum for each of the quarters. And you also want to implement this on the axis. How to do this? Because by default, this is not available in Power BI. But we can create a table which allows us to plot it this way. To do this, what we need is uh, at first the table itself. And I've created the table directly in Power BI using this enter data option. And let me just show you what the table looks like. If I go to the data view, this is what the table looks like. And I also have the table a little bit bigger because I then copy pasted this, this table into an Excel file so you can download it and use it if you want to apply it and so you don't have to manually enter this. The way it works is the following. We have here our relevant column, which we later will plot on the X axis, which contains at first here all the different kinds of month names and then also the quarters here. And we have three entries for each of the quarters because for each quarter we have three months. And this is the second column, the month column here. This is the column which has again the month names here, but then for each of the quarters, the month to which the quarter belongs or the, the month belongs to each quarter, yes. And the reason why we need this column is because this is the column we're gonna use inside the model to connect this table to our dates table. I'll show you this in a minute. And the third column we need is this sorting column. The reason why we need it is because otherwise we cannot ensure that the order inside our report in here is, uh, let me just go back to the view, is exactly this order, right? Because we want to have the first quarter after the first three months. And to ensure we have the right order here, this is why we have inside the file also this ordering or sorting column. And it starts with one, two, three, and then there's the break because the fourth entry would be then the first quarter, as you can see here, four, and then five, six, seven, and then there's eight. So that's how this, uh, uh, this table actually works. So for us, uh, again, this is what we want to plot on the axis. This is what we need in order to link this new table to our dates table and therefore to the model. And this is for sorting the first column correctly. So after we use this, so you can also right now, so import this if you download it from the resource section so you don't have to uh, manually create it. But as, you have, as I've told you, what I did at the beginning, I went to Power BI in here and I go to enter data and then I manually entered all this uh, data in here. You can also do this. Now, after you have imported the table, then you need to make sure if I go to the model view here that you connect the table in this case, I didn't name it properly, it's just called table, but we connect the table to our dates table using, as I hover over this, the month, because the month name is the same in here as well as the month name is in here. One thing to notice is this is a many-to-many -many relationship. In this case, this does not create any ambiguity, so we are totally fine with that. But we have to have a many-to-many -many because remember, because each quarter contains the month name again. So we have the month name twice in here and several time, oh, and also several times in the dates table because we have multiple years. That is the reason for that. But again, just make sure when the pop-up appears, make sure it's, it's a many-to-many -many relationship, it's fine. Okay, so we have this. Then one important thing is we need to go inside the data view here and make sure that if we select the month quarter column here, we go to sort by column and then choose the sorting column in here. Otherwise, we are not able to have the right order in our visualization. And also, please make sure when you do the sorting, because this is something I was uh, not aware of uh, at the first, click on the sorting column and make sure it is a whole number. Because if it's formatted as text, then actually after January, after the one, then the 10 would be the next entry. And this is not what we want. So make sure that the sorting column is of type whole number in here and make sure that the month quarter here 
is sorted by this sorting column. And if this is the case, then you can go back inside your report. And now the table itself is connected. This is the table. And if I select the visualization, you can see that all I did was I used the sorted month quarter column, put it in the x-axis. I chose here a bar chart and I also then choose any measure. It doesn't matter which one. In my case, it is the total sales. And I add this to the y-axis. Now you can also add additional labels if you want, but for the sorting, that's basically what it is. And now you can simply filter by a specific year and you always see not only the months, but also then the sum for each of the quarters in the same chart. Finally, what you might also want to do is you want to make sure that maybe the quarters have a different color that can also be applied. So let's do that together. So let's actually create a measure. I right click on my measures table here, create new measure. And let's just wait. Let me just zoom in and here to make it bigger so you can see that and call this, let's say, uh, quarter format. Of course, feel free to come up with a better name equals and then I go to new line. And I say, in this case, if I'm using an if condition here and say, let's say if the selected value, so selected value allows us to get the specific value for, let's say here, each of our, uh, in this case, uh, well, month and quarter names. And let's say if the selected value of this uh, month quarter column, month uh, quarter, where is it? Here, table month quarter, this is it. If this is, let's say, in, let's choose a user in, and we can specify a table and simply by using the curly braces and say if this is in and then let's say if it's Q1 uh, or is it Q2 or is it Q3, of course we need to have quotation marks here, or is it Q4, right? So these are our four quarters and this is exactly the name I have here in the table. So if you rename it in the table, make sure if you say, for instance, I don't want to see Q1 but quarter one, then of course you would also need to have quarter in here if you use the same measure. There are multiple ways to do it. But let's say um, if this is the case, then we would like to have a color and we can then specify a hex color or we could also use um, a string value. Like let's say then we want to have gray color and if not the case, let me just get rid of that, that this is gray and this is, this is not the case, let's say we want to use light. Light should be blue, I think, so light, like that. And then we need to close uh, the if condition and we are basically good to go. Now, of course, you could also put this in the formatting now um, to do a little bit, uh, well, make it a little bit nicer looking, but for now we are good to go. That should be fine. So let me just check that uh, and let's actually execute this. And we got our quarter format. And now let's actually select the chart here, go to the format you visual, and then let's say under the columns in here, and instead of using the blue color here, let's go to the FX and let's just do this by a specific field value and let's choose here in this case uh, the, what do I call it, quarter format, quarter format, here we go, select it in here, click on OK and you see that now we also have colored here the quarters differently. Now as I said, you could use any kind of uh, color you want, you don't have to specify the same one as I do here, you can try out hex codes and of course you could also try out a complete different DAX formula if you want, right? So that's it for this bonus trip. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, if this is interesting to you, then I would suggest try it out yourself and add it to your reports. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.